So, Inshallah, look, let me just before I start, let me apologize on the onset because um, what I'm going to say is very unorthodox and I think it's important. And I'm going to be not rude but quite blunt because I didn't travel for 40 hours so we can play games and say nice words and make you feel good and then we all go home and sing Kumbaya together. My brothers, the reality of our identity crisis. The reality of our identity crisis, in my humble opinion, is the fact that is the fact that we know very little of our deen. We're not completely convinced of our deen, and we're not proud of our deen. This contributes a massive factor towards our lack of identity. My brothers and sisters, there's something that we have to understand as Muslims. Our identity crisis for now, let's just worry about ourselves and not worry about what's happening outside. My brothers and sisters, you and I need to understand something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you. Allah doesn't need you. Don't think for a second that Allah needs us in any way, shape or form. Allah is the king. Allah, is the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. Allah is the sustainer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the seven heavens and the earth. Allah is al-malik. He's the king before you, he's the king while you're here, and he's going to be the king, trust me, well and truly after you're gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of me being a Muslim either. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfection, he's perfect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen is perfection. Something that we all fail to understand. The deen of Islam is not the deen of, you know, it's not the deen of a man. Islam is not the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People, Wallahi, people talk all the time that Islam needs reformation. Habib, you're not talking about the religion that belongs to my father. You know, look, I have the manuscript in my pocket, therefore I can change what I want and when I want and how I want. The deen of Allah is perfection. It's what it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has perfected our deen, it's complete. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of anyone to be a Muslim or not to be a Muslim. Allah is perfection. We need to understand this. And if you choose to be a Muslim, well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you that if you become a Muslim, then you accept, you accept Islam completely. You don't pick and choose what you want from the deen. There's no compulsion in religion. There's no forcing anyone to be a Muslim. Today, even the day I speak, our job is to make the whole world Muslim. Habibi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear to the Prophet of Allah. You can't guide whom you want, we guide whom we want. My job and your job as a Muslim is to convey the message. They accept, they don't accept, they pray, they don't pray. Well, Allah, it's not my business. My job and your job is to convey the message of Islam. This is our job and this is our responsibility. Now, why am I saying this? Sometimes these words, they seem a bit harsh. But we need to get basics. These are principles you, you and I need to understand. I choose to be a Muslim. I'm not forced to be a Muslim. There's no compulsion in religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want your deen. If you being a Muslim is by force, Allah's not interested. Allah doesn't want it. What does it benefit to Allah if I'm forced to pray? No, Habibi, no. I choose to be a Muslim. Why have I chosen Islam? Because Islam is perfection. It came from the Malik. It's complete. It's perfection. It wasn't complete and perfect 1400 years ago and now it's... Now it did. No, no, no. It was perfection then. It's perfection now and it will be perfection until we stand in front of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was handpicked by Allah. He was also perfection. His selection was perfection. His sunnah was also perfection. The problem with our identity is the fact that we're not convinced. You and I are still not convinced that his sunnah is the best, that his sunnah is the ultimate, that his sunnah is the only thing that Allah will accept. We're still not convinced. Because if we were truly convinced, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But deep down in our hearts, we can, you know, there's, there's ambiguity, you know, oh, well, I, you know, it's not clear, it's not... Because we're still not convinced. Influenced by this, that and the other. No. My Islam is perfection. And when you understand this, Wallah, you become proud of your deen. Habibi, what do you have that's better than Islam? Come here on the day and show me. Muslims today, they're falling all over themselves. Trying to make their deen, trying to justify my... Habibi, I don't have to justify my Islam to anyone. I don't have to justify what the Prophet does and when he does it and how he does it, not to anyone. He's the Prophet of Allah, he does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. We don't, how dare we question him? Who am I to question him? Someone comes to me, no iman, no tawheed, doesn't even wash his hands after he finishes from the bathroom. 
the way I'm not Muslim. Habibi, if you and I are confused, what have you left for all Muslims? You and I are confused, of course they're going to be confused. You know, there's nothing, in my humble opinion, there's nothing that non-Muslims love more than someone who stands up for principles, for people that stand up for what they believe in. But we don't. I don't need to justify my Islam to anyone. People come to me, oh, why is this? Muslims! Wallahi Muslims! Sheikh, why did Allah make this halal, man? Why is this haram in our deen? Who are you to question Allah? Who are you to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what understanding do you have, Yani? And don't get me wrong, you know, it's not like we can't ask questions in our deen. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to me, Allah, show me how you give life to the dead. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. As a Muslim, we can ask. But we don't ask because we're questioning Allah. Ibrahim asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya Allah, show me how you give life to the dead. Look, look, Allah teaching us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Ibrahim, Oh Ibrahim, don't you believe? Don't you believe, Ibrahim? Are you doubtful that I can give life to the dead? Oh, the Allah says, No, Ya Allah, I believe. But to strengthen my heart, Ya Allah, I want to see, to strengthen my Iman. Ah, if that's the case, if that's the case, Ibrahim, then we will show you. But we, you and I, we're still doubtful about our deen. We're still, we are still doubtful about the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims now, how many, honestly, how many times have you heard this? Brother, that Islam means peace. Have you heard this? Do you, do you, do you guys have this big Muslim in this country? Muslims everywhere, plastering now on billboards. Islam means peace. Islam equals peace. Where did you get this from? Islam doesn't mean peace. Speak to any Arab. Islam doesn't mean peace. Islam means submission. That's what Islam means. Islam means submission. And those that submit, they're called Muslims. And the more they submit to Allah, then the more peace they will have in their lives. Islam is a religion of peace, yes, but it's also a religion of war. Uh, no, brother, why? Why? Why can't I say this? Why are we shy of our deen? When the time is for this, then our deen is. This is the beauty of Islam. Now, is Islam about killing people? And, no, all the Allah, no. But when the time arises, when the time is in need, then the right hukum applies. Yes, Islam is a predominantly peaceful religion. It's about spreading love and peace and this, that. Yes. But when push comes to shove, then there are other hukum, you know, there are other rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today you and I, we're not proud of this. We're shy. We've painted Islam in so many different colors, even Muslims are confused now. What's our deen about anymore? No one knows anymore. Muslims, Habibi, forget, well, why Muslims are questioning the Prophet of Allah? We're scared and we're terrified. <coughs> People are shy of their names now. Muslims are now hiding their names. Why? Why, why? What name do they have that's better than ours, Yani? Tell me. I don't want to show you that I'm a Muslim. Why not? Because deep down in my heart, I'm still doubtful. I'm not completely convinced. Our problem is within, far more than what it is outside. Because you go outside and you see how non-Muslims deal with certain things that they believe in. Well, why? It's amazing. It's amazing, and forgive me, you know, Allah, I mean, it, it, it's really unfortunate that I'm going to use this example, but for the sake of understanding, you know, 20, 30 years ago, to be homosexual was such a, what you, it, it was such a frowned upon thing. But they used to celebrate, I don't know if you have it, we have it in Sydney, they have this year, it's, it's called the Mardi Gras, do you guys have it here? They're celebrating and singing and dancing and wearing all sorts of clothes, because it's something he believes in. Now we used to laugh at them before, now they're made to be heroes. Why? Because he was persistent on what he believed in. They didn't sacrifice what they believed in, you and 
why we do want to sacrifice, we want to compromise, we want to know whether you know we need to apply wisdom. What wisdom? This is my deen, this is my Islam, this is my honor, this is my sharaf. This is what I live for, this is what I died for. What do you want me to compromise? The deen of Allah, the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For what? And the question is really, for what? I would rather die on my feet, establishing the deen of Allah than to live on my knees. We're not proud of our deen, we're not proud of our prophet. We're not proud of his sunnah. This is causing us major problems. And the truth is, give me something that's better, Yahweh. Yeah, I mean, why if there was another solution, if there was another way that was actually doing better than Islam, why I, I could understand. But what is there? What is there? Look around the world. Point your finger in any direction. In and out today, people think that if we got rid of Islam and we got rid of Muslims, that everything will be fine. Would it really? Give me a country where depression is not on the rise, anxiety is not on the rise, sexual abuse towards children is not on the rise, suicide is not on the rise. T show me where! Crime is not on... Where? Where? Show me! Just point the finger! Show me which direction! Where? And you and I, we have the solution, we have the cure, we have the deal of Allah that came to solve the problems of all of humanity. And we're shy, we're embarrassed of our deen. What do you live for? We want to, well, like Muslims, Muslims are shy. Now, of course, I never speak like this in public, I'll never speak to non Muslims. No, please, my brothers, don't misunderstand. We show love and we show hikmah and we show wisdom. Because that's also the sunnah, that's also the, the... This is also from the identity of Rasulullah But we need to put things in perspective. It harms me more when I see a Muslim questioning the order of Allah than when I see someone that doesn't know the deen, doesn't know Rasulullah, doesn't know Allah, doesn't know Quran, and he's confused. He doesn't face me, Wallahi, he doesn't bother me. But the Muslim, who sometimes his name is Muhammad and he's questioning the laws of Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what's wrong with us? Give me something that's better. Ah, oh, you know, we heard you Muslims, you know, that you cover your women, that this is oppression and that you people are backwards and what do you do? Wow, man. We cover our women. This, this now is the big deal now. You cover your women. Yeah, but why do they have to cover their face and why? Why, you know, why? It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, there used to be a time when men had sharaf, they had ghira. The Muslim men, anyway, forget. There used to be a time when, you know, Omar ibn al-Khattab, imagine the ruling came down from behind the man. Omar ibn al-Khattab, he didn't sit right with him. That how can the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mothers of the believers, the women who, who were made haram permanently on the ummah anyway, yeah. It's, yeah, he didn't sit right with him. That how can our mothers be exposed to men? Which men, yeah? The most honorable and the best of men. So he came to the Prophet of Allah frustrated. This is something we don't have anymore. It's called ghira, it's called jealousy. It's long one now, this is extinct. Today now the brother has a nice photo with his wife, puts it on WhatsApp. It's his profile pic. Where in love? Tukburni, I'm a you and your wife. Tukburni, I'm a you and your wife. But did he say, yes, Habib, yes, openly. He knows every person that looks at him. He's looking at your wife and you know it. It's alright. Ghira, it's gone. Why do you have to cover? You know, it's funny. You go to any man, any person on earth, Anything that's valuable is covered. Anything that's valuable is covered. Your money, where do you put it? On the front window? Your jewelry, where do you put it? On the front window for everyone outside to see? Where do you put it? It's covered. It's in a safe. It's locked up. It's in a black velvet box. And we all understand, brother, it's valuable. It's precious. Habibi, our women are more precious to us than your jewelry and your money. We cover our women not because we're backwards, because they're the most precious thing we have. That's why we cover them. Not anymore. It's backwards. 
Jihad. You can't say jihad anymore. People buckle. Hey, brother, please don't see our Qabu alayna, brother. So what's going man? Masjid's going to get closed down. Why? Why, why? Why are you shy? Now, of course, what way, like I said, I will never speak of like, I don't walk outside publicly and talk about this stuff. But you need to understand, we're not convinced that Islam has jihad. You're damn right it has jihad. Oh, why? Habibi, give me a nation on earth that doesn't have a defense league. Give me a nation on earth that doesn't have a defense league. Forget when an invading army, refugees, Syrian refugees, people that were running for their lives when they came, people attacked them. Re Syrian refugees were attacked for trying to seek asylum. What does that say about that nation that when an army comes to invade you that you're going to throw rose petals at them, Yami? No, every nation has a defense force. Why? When the time comes, if it happens to be wet, no, no, no. Muslims, no, no, we don't have jihad. No, Habibi, yes, we do have jihad. And our jihad is more honorable than your jihad. You fight for resources and this. We fight to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't fight for anything else. You want to talk about what's right and what's wrong? Come, bring your jihad and compare it to my jihad. Maybe if we spoke a little bit more about the true jihad, not the jihad on TV. Not the jihad that, that the CNN wants to show me. Not the jihad of some young guy on YouTube with a little beard and his opinion. No, no, no. The true jihad. The jihad of Muhammad sallallahu Let's talk about it more. Maybe we will learn some decency. Come. Look at the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah and his companions. How many times when you go to fight them? If you imprison them, you treat their prisoners like you treat your army. You feed them from what you feed your army. Don't touch their women, don't touch their children, don't touch their moms, don't touch their priests. Don't burn their trees, don't harm the livestock. Don't touch their schools, don't touch their hospitals. Come, come, let's talk, let's compare. One of the companions, he killed a man that in Briyani. He killed a prisoner of war that said, La ilaha illallah. He killed him, he said, no, that is a liar. The Prophet of Allah, he says to him, you killed him and he said the Shahada, he said the Prophet of Allah, he said it to save his life. The Prophet of Allah kept telling him, you killed him and he said Shahada, you killed him. The Sahabi said, I had wished I had not embraced Islam before this day. Why? Because he made a mistake in war. They walked in, you see, with a suit and tie. They walked into Iraq many, many years ago. They raped the nation, they brought it down to the ground. Wallahi, if Iraq was to all gather today to try to restore itself, it would take a hundred years to get back on its feet. They wiped the nation down to the ground, convincing us that there was weapons of mass destruction. After 10 years, what did they turn around and say? Well, we thought they were there, but we were wrong. Forgive us. And then they walked away. We don't have a problem with that, but do we? That's all right. But we have a problem with the jihad of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Anyway, well, my brothers, I can talk all day long. We need to understand, if you and I are not convinced of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, what have you left for us? The deen of Allah is perfection. And it's not for me or anyone else to justify the deen of Allah or the orders. Yes, we can talk about the hukum, the wisdom, why the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we can talk about this stuff. But never ever to question Allah. Allah doesn't need him, I need him. And Islam is perfection. Islam is what changed the world. Islam is what changed Arabia. Islam is what made the Sahaba, is what made Allah pleased with the Sahaba. That was true success. And when we come back to our true deen, when we come back to the identity of the Muslim, proud of who I am, I'm proud of you, my father. Yes, I have shortcomings. Yes, I have mistakes. Yes, I'm not the best Muslim. But my identity is the identity of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll leave it with Shaykh Ahmad. Of course, the love that meets Shaykh Ahmad. Jazakum Khairan Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala.